So you have one take and one take only. If you don't get it, you don't get it. So we generally will be get, getting kicked out towards the end of the take by some employee. So we'll be in there for like, I'm talking, I shit you not, 22 seconds. Clip, out, viral. Let's go. What's up, what's up? I'm Brandon Man, Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you catch and stream your podcast here at the intersection of content and creativity. I messed that up. Damn. Yeah, currency, man. Yeah. At the center of creativity and currency. We're going to keep all that in because today we have somebody very special with y'all uh, to speak with. Y'all have not seen us speak with somebody like Evan Blum, so you know we like to bring on people who have gone different paths on the No Labels, No Labels Into Their Path podcast. Evan Blum is a videographer. He has a lot of AKAs. We'll probably just like cut in and let him give you like his own self intro into this, this part of the interview. I think that'll be hard. What's up, y'all? My name is Evan Blum, aka Dr. Clips, aka Pocket Spielberg, aka Tiny Tarantino, aka the Camp Counselor Content, aka the Dime Size Director, aka the Bite Size Blockbuster, aka the Vertical Virtuoso at your service. And this is no labels necessary. He's done a lot of different videos as of recent. Fly in a Boss. We interviewed them. Their content is going super crazy. He's the man behind it. The videos look amazing. They look immaculate and everyone's like, yo, who did this? Who did that? Trying to figure it out. And you know the content is great when people don't just say, I'm appreciating the artists and the music. They say, who shot this clip? Right? Who is doing this? The last time I seen that at this scale was when Gibson Hazard really started taking off. Do you remember? Well, do you know Gibson Hazard? Is he a videographer? Yeah. Uh, he's or not. A, or a I artist. think he's more on the editing side. No, I don't know him. Really dope guy, it's dope. but it's just the quality of the editing that he does, right? You do, do you do the video, videography and the editing? Yeah. All right, great, because one man team. One man. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you only, sometimes you only got half a man when you wake up in the morning, so you got to work with that. <laughs> yeah, bro. I hate big teams. You hate big teams. Dude, like when you come to a shoot and there's a bunch of uh, uh, Slow brains. They're just slow. They don't know what's going on. They're looking around. They work with, you know, they're representing blah, blah, blah. And, uh, dude, I'd like to be one man team, me the artist, then you can get crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody stops you when you're walking with two, you know, two people, three uh, people. Facts, yeah. If you're walking with a group of five, you get kicked out of everywhere in 30 seconds. It's ridiculous. Everyone's like, oh, there's something happening. There's like whatever involved. But like, it's not illegal to like shoot in an ice cream shop. Not that I checked. I mean, maybe it is, but. No one's gonna, like, it's not, like, they're, like, what, are they gonna sue you over a TikTok video? Like, what are you, crazy? Anyway. That actually gets right into it, because, like, <laughs> with Flying a Boss, right, obviously, after they were running, right, video starts to go viral, people recommend, hey, y'all should shoot in Ikea, y'all should shoot in uh, at McDonald's, or y'all should shoot in X, Y, and Z, all these random locations. I think y'all did Disneyland as well. The one-man team, you're saying keeping the production slim not only doesn't get you kicked out, but would you say it helps it be more organic or like how else does that help out the video in general? Well, uh, before it was popular, virtually no, no one wanted three people running in their establishment with a camera. Nobody wanted it. And the internet's crazy because now people, they call you, but you run here, no problem. We're running at TikTok tomorrow. Isn't that crazy? Like in the offices. Yeah. We're invited to do it. So anyway, so like, oh, man. we'll see how it goes. Like, I'm I want to like run into some guy with papers. We'll see if we can set up something fun, you know? I'm so glad that you just said but before this. before that, yeah. yeah. Because like you're already starting to see people just think, oh man, the industry is making all this stuff happen for them. But like the fact that people aren't inviting y'all out to do things. I oh, know yeah. um, one of them, I think it was Bobby said that they were going to go out to Japan or at least they want to do one in Japan and maybe because uh, people are asking them to do it, but someone needs to fly them out or something like that, right? Japan. Like, Actually, yeah, Japan would be cool. Yeah, but it's like the idea of when you're creating something that's so dope, people will want to be a part of it a lot of times. And as a company, it's a marketing opportunity. Should you, if you're running at my should actually be paying a lot of money. Exactly. These videos get more views in 24 hours than anything I've ever worked on, anything I've seen in the past like three months, four months, like crazy. Yeah. So it's like, uh, oh yeah, if you're a brand, it's a no brainer. Now, before we, this happened, like 
we get kicked out pretty much every time. So you have one take and one take only. If you don't get it, you don't get it. So we generally will be get, getting kicked out towards the end of the take by some employee. And then they usually say, okay, sorry, we're leaving. And by the time they catch me, not only did I have already got the clip, I already ran out. So not only, yes, no problem, we'll leave. I'm already leaving and I'm running. <laughs> so we'll be in there for like, I'm talking, I shit you not, 22 seconds. Clip, out, viral. Let's go. Now, other people want to, you know, recreate what they've done, but like, you know, you got to, I think everyone's got to find like a like own little idea. So other people have like started running too. You see like yeah. other artists, you know, like legit yeah. artists too. Yeah. But they just like, there's something fun about them and that song and running. Like probably with the next song, like we'll think of something else, you know, unless we just run for every song for the rest of their career. That was actually a fear of, I think, all of ours. Really? <laughs> the run forever. Well, like what about every song? You only have to run for every song ever they ever release. Like that's a pain in the ass. Hey, yeah, the car is gonna be crazy. Next one we're gonna have. Okay, so we've seen the runner, right? Uh -huh. So I've done. You know, I'll do the walker, I'll do the runner, do the sprinter. Then you level up. You got to go to the dodger, right, through a crowded area. And, you know, people. We can do a swimmer. We can do a climber. Uh, you know, whatever you name it. And I got my new one cooking. This is called the sleeper. You set up a camera while they're sleeping, just live footage. No, I'm kidding. It's a terrible idea. Totally kidding. Very creepy, weird idea. But. Uh, it's like Kanye, baby. Yeah, yeah, you just keep going. Yeah, yeah, you, just, you always got to level up. But we'll think, of, we got some tricks up our sleeve. Everyone's like, oh, like I've been hit, been hit up by a lot of people. This style you're doing is going to become tired soon. Uh, uh, you know, like, what do you got next? And I usually say, I got two words for you. Stay tuned, <laughs> motherfucker. If I told you what I'm doing next, then you'd fucking do it next. Yeah. What the fuck would I tell people? Yeah. People, what are you going to do next? I don't fucking know. How did y'all? How did y'all get to the idea? Was it an accident or, or was no? It originally, they had that? the idea they wanted to run, okay. right? And we did one to the first verse down a suburban street. And at first, like they thought I had to be like in a car, but I'm actually running uh, with them. I was like, I don't need a car. I was like, look at these legs, boom, car. So like we did that, and it went really well for first verse. And then we did another set of ones for the first verse, okay? And then we did one for the second verse. We're like the hello Christ, and uh, holy shit. For some reason, that running and that verse, because we've reposted the first verse and it does go off, but it's that second verse that has really like seemed to catch on the most, you know, got the most like replays and uh, people redoing it, you know, so that was just crazy. I so, think that yeah. to your point. And then we had to up it with stores. All right. That'll, that proves why any artist can't say I'm just going to copy that, right? Because even within the same song, starting in a different verse didn't hit exactly the same. You get what I mean? And there's other people who did. Yeah the running formula before that did pretty decent on TikTok, but I think beyond the verse, the song, the artist, the energy, the way they look, there was something about... Yo, hold the, on, this, to that point though, yeah. see like how you say the part of the song? Yeah. So he, you guys wanna hear something crazy that, that I've been thinking about the new music industry, right? Yeah. So videographers like me, who work closely with an artist, are actually being asked to select which portion of the song they wanna shoot content for. 10 of them to the same portion. Yeah. So not only are you A&Ring whole songs or A&Ring artists, I'm acting as like a quasi A&R to select certain audio sections that are completely, you know, every song is a different puzzle, mm -hmm. you know? But you listen to a three and a half minute song and select the 15 best seconds. You think you can do it? You know, it's like, it is subjective, but I don't know, you know? You just have like a feeling when you hear it, you know? Are you, so are you seeing in that portion of the song you're basically just going off of not just do I like it or not are you also going off of what you imagine that you could do or want to do when you hear it I look for a couple tenets usually some kind of large contrast moment sound like soft dynamic to a loud dynamic stripped and acapella to the full band coming in big drop to like a dropout moment just acapella like moments of big shifts so like in between musical sections it's so like a little bit of the pre into the chorus or generally a great part is people always do these awesome breakdowns after the bridge like, you know, on that third chorus, coming back into that third chorus big, and they'll do the first half of the chorus a cappella or stripped, and then they'll come in hard with a full band and the bigger than it's ever been. You know, it's like a song structure thing. So those parts do well, but like, so I look for that. And then, you know, sometimes the artist knows exactly what they want to do. And then sometimes we pick it together. And then sometimes they say, listen, I don't know, you pick. So I, I'll get everything, you know? Gotcha. But it is cool. I, I like, it's my favorite part of it. What is it about how you shot it though? Like the specific Flan and Boss running videos, where the way it feels is different than other running videos. Like, I don't know, like their heads feel almost a little bobble heady or something, or just the way, I don't know, it feels different. Is that like a post-editing thing or is that just how you shot it? 
or am I just tripping? No, you're not tripping. In fact, you're right on the money. You've been right on the money since I met you like 30 minutes ago. You're right <laughs> on the Benjamins. No, seriously, you're great. Um, your team, though, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, in editing, we're going to keep the head stabilized. So that's what you got to do. Now, there's a million ways to do it, a million programs you can do it on your phone, you can do it anywhere. But that's just a tenant of that video. Like, not every single thing I've ever done is like that, but it seems to work cool for the running videos. But, you know, next month, next year, next week, there'll be another new idea, and I don't know. Well, let's leave the running videos. We might find our way back to um, that at some point. But before we even got to this, so when Ja'Cory first showed me Fly and Boss's videos, I immediately were like, yo, they're dope. I love their energy. They're creative. Their music hits. There's something special about all of it. And the videos are hard. There's no way they can't blow up at some point. It had all of those. Obviously, you're the videos aspect of it um, and the particular ones that I was seeing. So beyond the running videos, the shit was already dope. What about these other songs? Like, I don't know. Like, is it, do you feel like it was partially something that was them that inspired the content and, and made them so dope? Or like, do you have any secret sauce? I don't even know exactly what I'm asking. I just know that this isn't the only dope shit I've seen from them. And I, I kind of want to like, um, just get a sense of your approach in general. Well, anyone that, uh, anyone that wants to become good at uh, videography or filming it comes down to one thing, like fucking great ideas. Software you fucking use doesn't really matter. The fucking camera doesn't really fucking matter. A, have great ideas, and then B, work with people who aren't afraid to like do fucking cool, crazy shit. Sometimes I work with artists and like they kind of want to like do something very boring. And like I'll push them and then they'll say no. And I'm like, why? The fuck? And then they do a video and if it's not as, doesn't do as good. I mean, sometimes people do good with simpler stuff, but like, dude, we should do crazy shit. Like we, when you want to go on your phone, you want to see something boring or entertaining? It's like, what the fuck? So I think the people that like want to be as entertaining as possible on camera, like we come up with crazier ideas and like they're down. Like Flying a Boss like was down, you know? Like they were down. Yeah. So with someone else though, it'd be something else. And like, you know, just the song or like the way they look or an outfit or something might inspire like, oh, let's try this, you know? But I have no idea. So the secret sauce is uh, uh, great ideas, but good luck there. No shortcut there. <laughs> How do you come up with good ideas, let's think? Uh, you got weed, you got acid, you got shrooms, you got alcohol, you got Adderall, you got Xanax, you got barbiturates, you got oxycodone, barbiturates. you got oxycotin, <laughs> you got Advil, you got Tylenol, you got Dayquil, you got Nyquil, you got Afrin, 12-hour nasal decongestant. Use them all. <laughs> Get some ideas. Come on. Okay, ready? I'm going to tell a story. Gonna, uh, 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 I was talking to uh, someone I know recently, right? And he, and, and he manages an artist. And this artist happens to be a producer that lives out of country. But he's helping him. And I heard the producer's stuff. And they took a portion of a song I was working on. And they extracted the acapella. And they took initiative. And the producer made a remix to the song. And I was like, this is incredible. Who is this guy? And my friend manages them. And uh, then they were trying to get like a way to get it released, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't going well. And I talked to my friend. I was like, why do you want to get the song released? Who gives a fuck? He's like, oh, but if you get in a release, you know, it'll be out for people to hear. We can, we can get an official release through blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why do you give a fuck about an official release? There's an official release, officially released every single fucking Friday that flops. They don't give a, nobody gives a fuck if it's official or not official. Yeah. Have you seen somebody be like, I love this song. Let me scrub, is this official release? Oh, it's not an official release. Uh, no, I don't like it anymore. No one gives a fuck. What do they give a fuck about? Fire fucking short form vertical videos. Yeah. That's what they can fuck about. It's just you can't beat it. Like, what are you, what are you gonna read a fucking, you're gonna read a news article in New York Times? Like, woo, like, who's getting a hard on for New York Times? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody cares about New York. When's the last time you read a New York Times? Like, article online, on your phone. Be honest. I can't even remember, man. Okay, let's not, let's not throw any publication on the bus, but like, why do they just make, they can make videos too. New York Times just start making videos. I don't know, make videos and news. I don't know, what the fuck? Yeah. It's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. So is, it, is your clientele like mainly music artists? Or are you yeah, only. Out? Only? Okay. Yeah. I only work with one thing and one thing only. I don't care about A-list, B-list, C-list, follower count. I like one thing, top talent. 
That's what I love. That's the only thing that matters. Because anyone can become anything, but they have top talent. Like look at Flying Boss, for example. Working with them for eight months. Eight months. We didn't go viral. We had one video that had a million, and then like, we didn't really do anything for like eight months. But I continue to work with them because they're fucking top talent, and I love them. So like, also like, you know, you like, some people, you know, you get friends with, but like, you know, so that's it. Anyone could become A-list. Any fucking idiot could be famous. How many idiots are fucking famous? What the fuck? So I don't want to work with them. Let's take a quick second to talk about the elephant in the room. If you're an artist trying to grow, we already know what your goal is. A thousand true fans. Everybody talks about it. But how do you actually make that happen? How do you get those fans? It's not just about getting views. You got to push people further down the funnel. So let's talk about it. Number one, do you have these people's data, right? Do you have the ability to text and build highly engaging relationships with these people? Can you boost your Spotify plays to actually have engaged users, not those surface level playlisting plays? Well, guess what? Fever Fan is a platform that allows you to do all of those things in one. So it's not overwhelming. You don't have to switch and have all these different logins and switch all your link and bios. You have even a link and bio tool that you can do. So everything is done in one place. So not only do you grow your fans, you do it for less work. How about that? Check out foreverfanmusic.com because we know it's not about views for the day. It's about getting fans who will be there forever. Foreverfanmusic.com. Let's get back to this video. So do you have like a, a music background or something, man? Because the, the way you talk about the, the video process, it, it kind of makes me think about how producers talk about working on tracks. Yeah, yeah, so artists. I was a producer for like eight years okay. in the music world. Makes sense. So All I came right. out to L.A. to originally do songwriting. Crazy, right? So the guitar and like acoustic guitar and me. It's all I had. No cameras, no editing, no videography skills, no production skills. The best I could do is record myself with an acoustic guitar through the uh, inboard microphone on my MacBook into GarageBand. That was like, that was the furthest my technological skills were at that time. So... Uh, and then music is fucking hard, <laughs> really fucking hard. Wow. Way harder than I thought. I, you know, I didn't want to go into that because actually the truth is it's a huge pain in the ass. But after producing, like I probably, so I use Logic Pro and I produced maybe like every day for about eight years, uh, hundreds of songs, maybe thousands, I don't know, who knows. Um, and, uh, yes, yeah, the same fucking thing as video editing. Automate this to go up here, there, down there, up here, in there, out there. It's like the same automation. You cut the clip length exactly where you want to start, put this part there. It's like the same, I think it almost looks the same. So when I started video editing, I was like, oh yeah. And then I was editing videos and I was like making it go in and automate it on the beat, just like you would on a normal production. You're not going to automate something off beat like a fucking loser. I mean, Jesus, like, no. So with video, it's the same. And people will be like, wow, you're like really editing to the beat. And I'm like, no shit, you're not? What the fuck's wrong with you? What the fuck? You're editing off beat? Why? It's music. What, are you crazy? Anyway, so, so not only that, and then I also like really developed my taste for the one take. Number one, editing is a huge pain in the ass. You can ask these guys. What, one, two, three, four camera feeds, Three audio feeds, all right? That's seven tracks that they have to deal with. Mix me up when he's yelling, gotta mix Chikori's little soft, bring him up a little bit. Sean gotta cut up most of his parts because he's boring, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's a lot of work. But with a one take, dude, it's so much better because the artist and I are in sync for that fucking 25 seconds and we nail it. We nail it and then you enhance it, but we nail it on site, like we get a movement and we plan out the blocking. They start sitting, they go standing, or sometimes it's dope, just keeps walking the whole way through and I'll do my moves to the music. And this is the part we do. So we're very decisive. We don't just fucking take the whole song and be like, oh, maybe, maybe we'll get dope eventually. No, 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 no. Very intentional. Choreographed to the very first second, to the very last second. And don't even, don't record a second longer. At least my opinion. So like, uh, yeah, and then the editing is, is a, more of a breeze. And they're one clip. So people ask me, oh, could you do this? I'm like, I don't make cuts. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm, you're an editor, but I don't do cuts. You don't, you, don't make a, you don't do cuts, one takes. They go, huh, a one take? I'm like, yeah. And they go, could you do cuts? I'm like, I specialize in one takes. <laughs> they go, oh, 
I'm like, you should definitely hire somebody else to do a cut, but I won't do a cut. <laughs> yeah, that, that being said, yeah, I, I'll do a cut for people, you know, for, for the special ones. Nah, not really. I, I'm mostly doing one takes. In fact, I'll probably do all, I want to make my whole career one takes. I never want to do another cut again. How much do you guys have been like making a thousand cuts? Terrible. See their timeline? Having a fucking panic attack. <laughs> Looks terrible. They got to color code it. They got blah, blah, blah. Like, watch. You guys are going to be like, you know, you get a text from Sean. Yo, where was that intro part that Evan did? Take one, not take two. You lost the footage. You had to dive through, find this one little fucking line four cameras ago, four projects ago, and your fucking second hard drive. And Sean's like, where is it? It's like 3 a.m. You're like, bro, I got to sleep. He's like, yo, let's get to work. I'm Mr. Brand. You know? How shitty is that? Now, but to one take, I bet you Sean has the take. So you only got one. So like, you know, fucking get in in one take. Stop being a loser. Anyway, <laughs> that's my opinion. That's my opinion. You should have came up with one take, CJ, see? This whole podcast, one take. Well, you, I'm, I'm sure they're already looking at the AI to edit. You guys are looking at the, the podcast editor AI, I'm sure. That looked sick. Before we get into that type of stuff, I actually do want to hear your opinion on AI. It's hell. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's okay, I'll, I'll live. There's something special about one takes to me. They've always ha there always has been. Um, one of the first videos that really, really took to me, that was a one take, there was this artist named Kie Kieza or Kaiza, whatever she had. Hideaway. This, hideaway. Yeah. I saw it on the airplane. I know it well. And I was just I'm like. I'm obsessed with that video. I, and it, it's a video that kind of like breathes obsession because it was one take. There's all this stuff happening, of course, choreographed, but no matter how high production it is, right? It could be a star or it could be somebody who is on the come up there's appreciation that, oh, this happened all at once, right? So even if it's, uh, cause typically- It's hard to look away, you're like, what's one thing? Right, exactly. For, for, for someone who's like bigger, sometimes they get deduced down to, well, you have all this money and budget, but when it's one take, you're yeah, like, well- talent. That's they, real talent. They still have to do it. It's like, it's real shit actually happening. Yeah. So yeah. there's something really attractive and addictive about one takes. Well, I, I'm burning up. I got you. I'm gonna get this sombrero and just fan myself. You know, you guys don't give a fuck, right? Is he gonna fuck up the audio? No, man, you're good. Oh my god, so I was God gonna, is fucking here. I was gonna ask you one outside of your own. What are some of your favorite one takes? Oh, it's a great take. It's a great. Uh, what a great question. Uh, it's not officially one take, but the best music video of all time, in my opinion, is Childish Gambino's "This Is America." In my opinion, uh, it's not even close. Now, number two. Thriller, Michael Jackson, the second best music video. Now, I know you asked about one takes. Neither of those are one takes. Childish Gambito tries, it's like almost a one take, but they, they kind of fake it. I'm trying to think of actual one takes. I'm not an expert in the history of one takes, to be honest. There's things that took to I'm going to be honest. And like, so people ask me now, like, are you ever going to just like, like, I even got asked recently for an artist I worked with. This is amazing. Like, why don't we do a full music video? The whole thing. One take. I said, great. And he's like, why don't we shoot it horizontal? And I said, why? He said, uh, I don't know. I'm like, well, it's fine to shoot things horizontal if you just don't, don't want anyone to see it. That's, that's great. I have no problem shooting things. You just don't want anyone to see it. Okay, got it. So we're got to run the set. So you want as many people to see it as possible? Oh, okay, optimize for vertical. Like, like someone watching this right now, watching me, right? How are they watching me? Horizontal, probably. Now, now we, we got a YouTube presence, I'm sure. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. No doubt in my mind. But when they're watching a clip, they're holding that phone. So unless you are going to contact Apple and, and change the orientation of the phone, uh-uh, vertical. Embrace it, you know. I'm here, my goal is to make vertical content every bit as legitimate and high art as horizontal content, right? A music video is seen as high art. The Kendrick Humble video, high art. Horizontal. Dave Myers, genius, blah, blah, blah. He just did the new uh, Little Sims uh, video for Gorillaz. It's like amazing, high art. I love music videos, actually, personally, but I'm just saying, like, why not do the whole thing vertical? I'm glad to hear you saying this. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, man. Like, you can elevate it, just do it vertical. What the fuck? fuck's the difference? I've been saying this, actually, for years. Um, oh, my God. Because I don't God. understand why, when you change a format or you go to a new platform, like, oh, my gosh, this thing is TikTok, it's, and they'll judge a platform or they'll judge a format when I'm like, you're the creative. You decide what actually gets created. Right, so just because it's vertical doesn't mean you have to be low quality, no low effort, mm -hmm. right? So, was there something that clicked to you that made you get to this point that I want to do it that way, or were you just all out of the gate like, hey, this vertical thing's cool and I want to take it well, to the top? Yeah, I listened to one uh, indicator of how well I'm doing and one only. Like, 
what, how you think I'm doing, how anyone thinks I'm doing is actually doesn't matter. There's only one person I listen to, and that is the market. Every fucking time. The internet knows. Yo. Label people, CEOs, your fucking know-it-all cousin, your know-it-all a brother, your know-it-all roommate, your know-it-all girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. They don't know shit. The market will always tell you. Like, replace algorithm. I, I, this is a Mr. Beast quote I love. He said, replace algorithm with audience. The, algorithm, the audience didn't like it. Oh, the algorithm. Uh-uh-uh. The audience didn't like it. So you got to just make like 100 more. I don't want to make 100 more. Uh, all right. Well, I guess just go work in finance. I don't know. What, what, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> like, it's just like you either make 100 or you make like zero. Like, that's in my opinion. Like, I feel like you should make 100 videos. Like, I mean, you guys aren't setting out to make five of these, I'm sure. It's very obvious. You want to make 100, which is why we're fucking here. And it's fucking probably going well. Is this podcast going well? Yeah, it's going right. No, not this one, like in general. How's the podcast going? Yeah, I mean, we've been building it for like eight, nine months. Is it, so does this make you happy, like doing this? Yeah, I love having conversations really? with interesting people. Fuck, I should do a podcast. This is sick. Yeah. It's a little hot, but that's not your But the best part is kind of like how you said, talent or some version of people who are interesting to talk to. Yeah, so talented people try are interesting. to find, a, try to avoid becoming one of those podcasts that just like talk to whoever or hit a specific subject because your audience only wants to hear that type of thing. So this actually opened us up to talk to people like you, right? So Amazing. When you, um, is this fucking up the audio a little bit? No, nah, man. You know, just... Okay. What are you using to edit this? Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Ooh, bad. In trouble. That's he's not interesting. using Vinci Resolve. Bad. Very bad. You guys, you, know, you guys are losing money that he's using that program. Really? Why? Why you say that? Well, you know, time is money, right? Mm, I agree. Time actually costs more than money because mm. you can't get it back. Right. How much you pay? All right, go ahead and put us all on game on camera, man. There's two man. rare things in this world, right? Your time and a true friend. Because you can be rich as fuck, not one true friend. What the fuck? True friends are very rare. Don't forget, don't forget your true friends. Shout out to all the true friends out there. Have you been a true friend lately? Or are you being a fucking asshole? Come on, you you know who you are. Okay. Uh, what was the question? No, you were just about to put us on game on why we're losing money because EJ oh, has a bad system. Oh, yeah. God. What a piece of shit. Okay. So this is my opinion. Um, Adobe will never change or get much better. It might get incrementally better over a long period of time, but it will always suck because the bones suck and the internal coding is fucked up and it can't encode clips fast. And the updates, I wipe my ass with their updates. Resolve is the single-handedly changed my life. I was using Premiere for like three years working, and I use Resolve, and in one year's time I'm here, by the way. So I couldn't do anything I'm doing now at the, at the output level and at the quality level if I was still using inferior program. Oh, but After Effects, I love After Effects. What about the dynamic link, right? You just right-click it, plus replace clip with After Effects composition. Dynamic link? You have to open up a whole new program, wait for it to fucking open, redo it, the program's slow as fuck. You have to re-export it. You go back to the program, won't even fucking play, it's pink now. You gotta re-export it, drag in the re-exported clip, and you can't even use the dynamic link because it's so fucking slow. You call it a dynamic link? Dynamic link my ass. Not dynamic link. Resolve, you got the same program, Fusion, in there. So I'm using, essentially, to the, people don't know about Fusion because it's like still newer, but I'm using After Effects on every single video you see. Every single one. So no, ain't nobody can put out as many After Effects videos as I'm doing because like, I, remember, I'm a one-man team. Everything you've ever seen with my name on it, I've shot and edited. One person. So like I've, like, let, let's look right now. Okay, let, okay, let's look at since we've been talking. Okay, we'll get on the phone. Okay, hold up. Okay, let's go on TikTok. Let's go on profile. Okay, let's finish. get all the lazy people to understand something. Okay, mentions and tags. Okay, so since... Today, we have one, Maddie Noy, that's one piece of content, one video of mine I shot and edited. Courtney Page Nelson, two. I made one for my girlfriend, Julia, so it's cute. Three, but she posted it. <laughs> okay, shot and edited. Sky Daddy Music, four. Danny Coke is something I shot and edited for playing pickleball, five. Okay, okay, that's today. All different people, five different releases in one day. And people go, oh, like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, I don't have a fucking life. No shit. <laughs> oh, like, what the fuck? Like, I have three things I like. Clips, my wonderful girlfriend, Julie, Mrs. Clips, and my dog. What the fuck? You know? That's it. 
So, I mean, and it's not like, oh, like he should take a break. He's going to burn out. People say, you're going to burn out. Like, why do you work so much? And I'm like, what else is there to do? I'm like, I don't get, like, what, am I, what else am I supposed to do? Like, uh, go uh, lie by a pool? It doesn't make me happy. Go uh, traveling? I don't even, why? People go oh, all the time. They offer me to go out of town. Hey, you want to fly here? You want to fly here? No. I don't go anywhere. I fucking live in California. What the fuck? You want to fly to New York where it smells like piss and it's hot? No. Actually, I am going to New York next week. <laughs> but like some places, it's like you want to go to like fucking, I don't know, whatever. I, it's, it's, fun to talk shit on, it's fun to talk shit on places because there's just so many people that like you can't be that offended. It's like I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about the city. Like San Francisco, for example. Eh, a little boring. Nashville, pretty, uh, that'd be cool. I'll, I'll go to Nashville and New York. But anyone's like, you wanna go to Idaho? I'm like, no. Why? I like to work, come home to my dog, my beautiful girlfriend, Mrs. Clips, sleep in my bed, get a wonderful eight hours, wake up, go to Whole Foods, buy a green juice, take two bong rips and get to work. The fuck? Is this because you're passionate about what you do, or is it just like your, like who you are? Like I only want to do a couple of things, not be bothered by the rest of it. Um, what was the question? Is it because of I, I was I was having a fantasy so, answer so that so I'm not, not gonna say. You, you know how everybody has this. Uh, if you do something that you're passionate about, you'll never work another day in your life. Da 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 da. You yeah. got that whole thing right, and you just said I don't see myself getting burnt out. So do you feel like that's because you're passionate about what you do now, even though you started trying to pursue music? Or is it just like, I, I'm a type of person that doesn't want to do a whole bunch of shit. If I'm doing something that's working, I'm cool. Like, what do you, where do you think that comes from? You feeling like, I don't, I'm not going to get burnt out. Uh, well, first of all, I'm very lucky to know what my passion is. That's pretty rare. Um, but one thing that, we're, we're, that I think you're forgetting to touch on is uh, I had eight years of pursuing another passion and uh, making dog shit and, you know, whatever, being treated like shit. Now I do videography, it's like unbelievable. They used to be like, sir, who are you? Now they go, oh, Evan, right this way. Same thing. So I, I, I uh, my Honda Civic that I used to have, it's a total piece of shit. And when I look at it, I just think songwriter. <laughs> I look at my new car and I think videographer. You know what I mean? That's what I think when I, when I look at my cars. And I don't have two cars. I have one piece of shit. I just got a new car recently and I'm like very excited about it. But I just have, it's not like I have like, a, I don't have like a garage of cars, but I just have like this piece of shit Honda. If anyone needs a Honda Civic, it's got about 180,000 on it. I mean, I'll give it to you. I might pay you to take it. It's such a piece of shit. Seriously. Uh, just come get it. You can hit them up. Uh, you can, you know, if you need that Honda. Do you feel like? You can burn it for a video. Now that would be good. <laughs> Fucking push it off a cliff for some content. That's actually a good idea. Look at this. Bro, we're getting arrested, but that'd be a good idea. I, you, you, there's no way that's legal to push a fucking car off a cliff. Okay, sorry. Uh, do you feel like the, the, the videographer is the most important person on the artist team right now? Uh, the videographer and the other person, yes. That's probably equally as important. Who's the other person? Person who's paying the videographer. <laughs> Facts. Person that says yes to that invoice. I don't discriminate against anyone. Everyone is either two types of people. People that pay my invoices slowly, people that pay my invoices quickly. I prefer quickly. Whatever else you're into, no problem. But please, pay the invoices quickly, very quickly. Net 60, net 90. Net 90, and I may not be alive in 90 Bro, days. We, we had the, the same thing, man. What the fuck? We, we don't work with them, because it's like, that's Bro, not. Bro, net 90? For what? Come on, it takes For you 90 what? days to fucking zell somebody? It's 2023. Y'all are gonna have to adjust oh, to the world. Oh, we're so overwhelmed. And then like, you bug them, they zell you in 30 seconds. I'm like, you were so overwhelmed, you couldn't go on your phone to your fucking bank account that's obviously connected to your phone for your business and zell somebody? Yep. It literally takes, net 90? Yep. Oh God, don't get me started on net 90. What the fuck is that? It's three months. The fuck? That's a long time, is that not? Oh, no, this is a long time. We've had too many conversations now, about this. Now, listen, yeah. if we're waiting for a check in the mail, and this is 1986, mm -hmm. so reasonable, 90 days, you gotta take a check, you gotta take it to the notary, you gotta get it approved, you gotta get it stamped, you gotta get it sent out. The mailman's gotta take it from the post office to your place, like maybe it gets sent back, you need to account for error. 2023? What the fuck? 
Tell me, today, actually. How much you guys pay me for this? <laughs> oh, man. No, we would have talked about that before. <laughs> Okay, no, I'm just having fun with you guys. Yeah, we will that with that. Okay. So, like, with that being said, man, you um, you've worked with quite a few people thus far. Do you have any aspirations of doing anything beyond music videos, feature length, length films? I, I already or have something. I've already made like a 14 minute short film, another 11 minute short film, and after I was done, I was like. What would I rather do? Make another one of those or kill myself? And it was kill myself was the answer. Fuck no. Short. Short form. You guys see my Instagram bio? Yeah. Yeah. What does it say? I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember. Seen it, I've seen it, man. I spent like months on perfecting what I call the phrase that pays. It's a phrase you can tell somebody's brain that it's impossible to misunderstand what I do and what I'm about. People say, what like before they're like, what do you do? I'm like, I well, I make videos, but sometimes I uh, make it for like event and uh, and then I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, we're gonna specialize. Yeah. I'm a filmmaker specializing in making large batches of short form vertical content. Exactly. Any questions? <laughs> like what? Any questions? I hate, I think I just hate questions. It's like, ugh, like that's what I do. They go, oh, like do you make long form? I go, did you hear me? <laughs> did you hear me? So you want me to do something I don't specialize in? No, I mean, maybe, I don't know, probably not though. Do you think it's more money? An opportunity that's come because probably like you faster these money, other yeah, fa faster money. I don't know about more. I don't really know about the other industry, but like definitely faster money in content. Well, no, I'm not saying in content in general. I'm just saying I'm sure when you first started doing videos, you didn't say I'm doing this, right? A short form. No, no. So I made like 45 traditional music videos before I did this. Right. So, do you feel like long term it gave you greater opportunities, even though it could feel like you were cutting something out? Right, but just specializing in general, even if it's not this short form, do you think for a video editor who's inspiring and just watching you in general, like, hey, yo, specialize in something, stick to that shit, become great at it versus do whatever comes to you? Yeah, well, I mean, first, I specialize in performance videos, essentially is what they are, with musicians performing. Okay. So performance is obviously a very broad word these days. You could be like in a pool of, in a kiddie pool filled with mustard in a red jumpsuit. You could be underwater performing. You could be jumping out of a plane performing. So, but it's music, and that's what I love, and that's what I care about. So I can obviously easily specialize in that. But specializing is great. You get, it's weird. It's like you tell somebody you specialize in something, you get charged more, but you can do less. You're like, yeah, so this is what I'm saying. I suck at pretty much 99.9% .9 of styles, but I can do this one pretty good. Anyway, that'll be twice the price. You're like, huh? You think you would pay, you, you would, uh, I mean, well, technically it's like I do do one type of niche content, but you got to also think, remember, I'm going out there, so I'm definitely a DP, okay? I'm helping direct the talent, so I'm technically a director. Okay, I'm helping select part of the song, so I'm technically a quasi a and &R. I mean, picking which part of the song to market online for content? I mean, talk about an A&R, Jesus. Uh, then, after I'm done, I'm offloading the footage onto my computer, so I'm an assistant editor. Then, I'm editing said footage, stabilizing, keyframing, whatever I want to do to make it look dope. That's five jobs. Then... I'm color grading it. That's a colorist. So that's six jobs. So I'm technically doing around six jobs. Then I send it to somebody. You know, let's say secretary sends it. Seven jobs. I'm trying to think how many like more bullshit things. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's like, uh, what was the question? But it was like something like, uh, do you see yourself? No, do you think it's a smarter basically business? So I guess yes, yeah, in specializing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. But you got a lot. Like it's like you know, be like I refuse not to have fun. So like, this is not like some like crazy uh, uh, agenda I've had with starting the way I'm doing what I'm doing. It's been following like what I already like. Like I like content, you know what I mean? Like I like short videos. Like obviously I have a little bit of ADHD issues, maybe some ADD, maybe some untreated obsessive compulsive disorder. Who knows, we're still figuring it out, you know? Still hit my growth spurt, you know? Uh, maybe like next year. Um, so yeah, bro, luckily I like it. Yeah, so like if you have something you really like, I would just get so fucking good at it, it's ridiculous. Now, how do you get really good at something, right? It's a great question, right? How do you get, like how did I get so good at fucking editing videos yeah. to the point where I'm here, I have a car from it, like what the fuck? You just did it One, a lot. no, what? You just did it a lot? No, no, because it's hard to do it a lot. One word, Adderall. Oh my God, what a drug, woo! So here's my recommendation. Anyone wants to learn anything, all right? Pick your focus drug, Adderall. 
Vive ins. Whatever you got to do, do what you got to do. Take an extended release so it's a little bit less harsh. Don't be snorting. Don't be an idiot. This is work. This is not a fucking party. Take the Adderall in the morning at 9.30 a.m. Eat perfectly and drink green juice the day before and during. Feel perfect. Think perfect. Take Adderall and go on YouTube and pick one subject and watch every fucking video on that subject you can find. So, for example, I learned Resolve. You would, you're not going to believe this, but the program that I'm editing these videos on, I learned this year. We started the year. So I changed from, uh, yeah, Premier Schmo to Resolve. Anyway, so I took Adderall and I, uh, I watched every beginner video on Resolve for like eight hours. And then once you do that just one time, you don't got to take Adderall every day, but you just want to get all the boring shit out of the way. The worst part of any software is like, how do I press save? How do I... Fuck, where's the fucking resize button? Like, you don't know anything. But once you get past that bullshit, you know all the layout, all the controls. So my Adderall is spent on purely boring topics that are important. So whatever you got to learn, focus your boring on your Adderall session. Then, once you kind of get through that, then you can start getting a little creative with it. And like, I just don't need Adderall anymore. So I just use it for the initial onboarding. So I took Adderall and I learned Blender. I took Adderall, I learned DaVinci Resolve. I took Adderall once and I learned Premiere Pro. I took Adderall once and I learned Final Cut Pro. Adderall, excellent drug. Oh, what a drug. Wow. Sponsor me. Well, don't take too much. Like, this is work. This is not, oh, uh, yeah, probably, yeah. This is, this is problematic, right? Like, people are going to do drugs and shit. Look, this is problematic. I don't want to, I'm personally Have you guys ever done Adderall? About, no, I've never done Adderall. Come on, yeah, I you have. zero education on yeah. Adderall. Sean's, oh, that, yeah. that sounds like someone who's done Adderall. <laughs> have you done Adderall? No, uh, never. For real, you've never done it? Yeah, never. Crazy. Wow. Because I, I was always afraid it would make me, like, too focused and I wouldn't be able to come out of that. You know what I'm saying? Too focused? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a thing, if it's an irrational fear. you still get sidetracked. It's like you're, not like, an, you're not like an alien. It's just, like, it's just it's amphetamines in your brain. Just, like, it's, it's crazy. Okay, well, uh, have you guys, do you have, have any software you're trying to learn? Any, any programs you've been, like, kind of offhandedly having a thought in the shower? Oh, I kind of want to learn how to do this. Anything? Software? Like, like software on a computer. Any Think programs? Of, no, not programs. Yeah, well. Like, oh, like, let's say these, these guys are slow. I wish I could just maybe edit a clip quickly for myself if I really wanted it for X reason without having to hassle him. That's how we got them, the complete opposite, yo. Okay, all right. So like, okay. <laughs> we need some all right, what about you guys? What software do you want to learn? What software? I bet yeah, EJ wants software. to learn Resolve. Blender. Resolve? Okay, good. See? I mean, I'm in the Google Sheets right now. Do you have now. any Adderall? <laughs> like, for real, bro. Like, I'm in the Google Sheets right now, no, bro. Like, you have it. You need some? I need some. Yeah. All right. We'll, t we'll, we'll talk off record. All right. <laughs> you ever take Adderall? I have. See? Turns out the software guys take an Adderall. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, these are what I call vibe guys, right? Like, these are the guys, like, actually, like, doing the grunt work, fucking making it look the way it looks. These guys just bring the vibes, huh? Yes, yes. How did you guys get so unlucky and they get so lucky? You guys get to bring the vibes. You took Adderall. Lucky. That's what happened. I mean, look at this setup. <laughs> we got two A6400s, an A7R3, an A7 II. Yeah. Then we got a DJ Osmo 3 with the iPhone 14 for vertical content. We got three sources of audio, audio going into an audio mixer. I mean, these guys are, there's two people doing all this. So, you guys paying them? Yeah. Enough? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Raise. Whatever they're giving you? Yeah. Yeah, it's leverage. That's it. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. no. You also got to like who you're working with. I'm really not all about money, like I swear. Like I like making money like the next person, but I'm, I'm truly genuine when I say Do that. I, I am not chasing money right now, and uh, I will let it chase me, you know? Do you have any assistants or anybody that's helping you on your team? I know you do the editing and that talent work. Yeah, I have, one, I have, I have one person who is like is my, is my everything. This is, shout out to Julie Greiner, Mrs. Clips. She's my girlfriend, my partner, my, and my business partner. So she's got seven years of hard-nosed agency experience working in influencer marketing. So working with said influencer, getting a contract written up between the influencer's manager and the brand, Nabisco, Hot Pockets, and then getting said influencer to feature that product in one way and another in one piece of social media content, maybe three stories, four posts. One post, three stories. Uh, one Twitch stream, one story, whatever. Like There's all types of uh, agreements that go into it and like negotiations like how much money for how much content anyway so she's been negotiating these kind of deals for seven years in icom right now i'm working for musicians now nobody thinks that musicians are influencers but yeah they are uh have you seen your favorite musician they have like six million views six million followers 
It's called a mega influencer, actually. You got micro, you got nano, you got mega. You got them all. <laughs> so she actually quit her job. And now, she, now we, she works with me, which is awesome. So she wants to like scale. Like, oh, let's scale. Let's hire a bunch of people. I'm like, oh, what a headache. Like scaling? That would mean that I would have to put trust in another person uh, to do all these shoots. And these shoots are, you know, they're kind of intimate. It's just me and one person. Uh, they have to go out, sometimes meet, you know, if, if, for my business model. And like, you know, what if they're a weirdo? Like, I don't want to fucking, I'm, I, I don't trust anybody. So I'd rather make less money and have less stress. Have you ever heard of more money, more problems? Well, there you go. So I want to make as much money as I can by myself. You know, maybe I'll let her scale. But like, I just don't want to touch the scale. Like, I want to make art with my life. I want to focus on creative stuff. I don't want to manage a bunch of fucking assholes, you know? So what's the alternative? Is it just charging more? Yeah. So you just got to charge them up the ass. But you got to be really good. Well, how do you get really good? How do you get really good? I'm asking you. Oh, you remember? How do you get really good at a software? Oh, together. There you go. There you go. And green juice. The pro and green juice. Oh, OK. This is actually like, let me rep something healthy. Uh, uh, if you need to actually feel better instantly, it's a hack. The people that aren't, the second you introduce green juice into your life, and I'm not talking about making it at home, because I've never seen a single person sustain that. It's too fucking difficult to juice your own shit. No, fuck that. Buy it at the store at Whole Foods. Way easier and sustainable. It's a total ripoff. Man, is it expensive. Worth it. Worth it. It makes you think better. makes you feel better. makes you see clearer. It's like fucking magic juice. Green juice. And, and, and none of this fruit. Uh-uh. Oh, a little apple, a little water. Uh-uh. Vegetables. Oh, real Celery. Cucumber, okay? Lettuce, kale, spinach, right? Ginger, only kind of fruitish. We'll, we'll, we'll add some lemon in there for the, for, the, for the wimps, you know? So we don't want to chase them away yet, okay? Like you put seaweed in there. You fucking down that green. You don't, I, I don't drink my green juice. It's not, like a, a, it's not like a Sprite. I fucking down that shit, down the hatch. It's a vitamin. Anyway, it's a sick vitamin. Green juice is sick. I'm probably gonna get some right after this. I'm fucking hotter than hell in here. I'm hotter than Usher in 2003. You guys remember that year? What year did Confessions come out? Uh, it was it was around 2003, 2005 ish, somewhere in there. Remember when Confessions dropped? What a fucking hit! Remember? I was just listening to it the other day. Yeah. Great. How, could I, how could I? How could I? Great album. I love Usher. <laughs> I well, love Usher. Let's um, like I want to end here. We have a question that we love to ask people. What does the term "no labels necessary" mean to you? It means breaking free of any kind of category or just being held in a box in any way. <laughs> and we're going to leave it at that. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brad Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And I'm Evan Blum. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.